battery size, battery capacity, whether it mounts internal or external, watt hours, what does it all mean? Well, today we're diving deeper into the big wide world of batteries. One of the main differences in batteries is the capacity that is able to hold. Now in the e-bike world, this is measured in watt hours and it means exactly that. How many watts can that battery deliver over an hour of constant use? But it's not quite as simple as that. The higher power motors are gonna have a higher draw on that battery. In summary, the main brands on the market are Bosch. They have 500 watt hours and a 625 watt hour battery. Shimano, 504 watt hours. Brose 630 watt hours and Panasonic and Yamaha both offer 500 watt hours too. Plus, of course, there's loads more battery manufacturers out there are going to offer loads of different options too. Let's take a look then at what types of batteries that some brands use. One of the smallest is the Fazua. That's a 250 watt hour battery. It's the smallest battery out there in a mid-drive EMTB. But remember, it's a low torque system, meaning it doesn't use a lot of battery. Plus it's got a real neat touch where you can remove the battery and stick in a blanking plate. Next up, the Levo SL. Now this is a 320 watt hour battery, which is internal. And it's got an optional 160 watt hour extender. 480 watt hours combination. Neat touch is you can actually fly with these extender batteries. Moving on, we have the 504 watt hour lightweight Shimano system. Still able to punch those bigger rides out in the lower power settings and meaning you can chuck a spare in your bag to punch out those big rides. Then we have the Fantic XF1 Integra. This is 630 watt hours, meaning it packs that bigger punch. Then the specialized Levo, 700 watt hours for those big, big days out in the hills. Sizing up from that, we have the Rottweil, 750 watt hours, a true all day trail smasher. Moving on to the biggest one of all, the M1 Spitzing, 1050 watt hours, the biggest production EMTB with an integrated battery. But if you want to go bigger than that, then there's a the piggyback systems coming in from High Bike and Focus. Some of those batteries mean you can add to them with the extenders and get a huge 1,125 watt hours for those big, big days out. Right, so let's talk about charging times. Now this can vary from system to system. Bosch actually have a fast charger, meaning that you can charge a 500 watt hour battery from flat to full in around three hours. It can also charge that battery from flat to 50% in around an hour. Perfect for those mid-ride lunch breaks. But for general batteries of around five to 700 watt hours, it's roughly gonna take you around four to six hours to get that full charge. Right, so let's talk chargers. Now these come in different shapes and sizes too. You get your standard charger, the one that comes with your e-bike. This is great for those day-to-day -day chargers of your e-bike ready for every ride. Then you get your lightweight chargers. These are great for sticking in your backpack for those bigger rides and those top-ups that you do when you're having lunch. Or you can even get car chargers, meaning that you can charge your e-bike battery up on the way to the trail or have it on charge whilst you're out shredding the trail, come back and plug a fresh in. The way that the battery is mounted into the frame can also differ. You can have internal and external batteries. This is the Canyon Spectral on and it has an externally mounted battery, meaning that it's not quite so sleek looking, but the battery is a lot smaller in size. The great thing about these is you can whip them out, stick them in your backpack, slot a fresh in and have huge range from your e-bike. A great example of an external battery is the Great Battery. It's one of the smallest out there. It knocks out 700 watt hours and takes simply seconds to detach from the bike. 
Then you can get internally mounted batteries. This is the Specialized Turbo Levo SL, and the battery is housed in the down tube, meaning that if you were to swap the battery on this bike, it's a little bit more complex, but this older brother, the Levo, means you can simply take a bolt out and the battery slides out the down tube, keeping it nice and sleek, but you do have that bigger battery that can be a little bit cumbersome when it goes to those bigger rides. Then there is of course this huge world of DIY e-bike batteries. Now the way that these can mount to your bike can vary from everything from your rucksack to sticking them on your frame on the water bottle bosses, loads of different options out there. Then there is of course range extenders. These are quite new to the market. They just add a little bit more range to some of those batteries on your e-bike. This is a specialized system. This is 160 watt hours, meaning you can clip this battery into your water bottle mount and get a bit more extra range. Now charging your battery, now this can be either done with a battery removed from the bike in the comfort of your own home or workshop, or you can simply plug the battery in whilst it's mounted into the bike. Both of these options, you're gonna use the same charging point on the battery, so that choice is ultimately up to you. So if you're thinking about removing the battery from your e-bike, say for instance, you live at the top of a set of high-rise flats or something like that, there's a few things you need to consider. One is how easy does the battery remove from the bike? Now this varies from brand to brand. Bikes such as this Canyon Spectral on, it's a simple lock and key and that battery will simply pop out of the frame. Pretty easy. The lifespan of a battery can vary on how well it's been looked after in its life. Things like storage, temperatures and usage will all affect how long the battery will last. Warranty wise, well this will differ from different manufacturers. Roughly around 500 to 1,000 full cycles on your battery or a couple of years of use. It all varies, so check out the different websites. Batteries are quite like us humans. They don't like extreme temperatures of either hot or cold. Around 20 degrees Celsius is ideal. Temperatures below minus 10 and above 60 should definitely be avoided. When it comes to charging your bike and leaving it, be sure to remove it once the battery is fully charged. Although the battery charger should take care of things and switch off, but a good tip is to use a timer that turns off after a few hours. Remember, if you're storing your bike for a few weeks without using it, then it's best to keep that battery charged to around 60% rather than a full charge. Transporting the batteries on your e-bike, well, you've got a few different options there. If you've got a van, you can simply stick your bike with the battery in, straight in the back of the van and go riding. But if you've got a bike rack or a bike carrier, then it's quite advisable to remove that battery from your bike. If it was to fall out on the motorway, it could cause a big accident. And another reason to remove it is it makes your bike a lot lighter, meaning it's easier to lift up onto your bike rack or your bike carrier. And the other one, so that battery is going to be nice and warm and ready to ride, not freezing cold and maybe losing out on a little bit of range with a cold battery. Batteries, they are definitely quite a complex part of your e-bike, but don't forget if you've got any questions about e-bike batteries, drop us them in the comments box below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you subscribe to EMBN and make sure you follow us on social media too.